question, I want to finish by saying tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. I call the Honourable Maggie Barry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is with pleasure I rise to talk to this bill, a bill that I believe is long overdue. Uh, it was June last year when the then Prime Minister, the Honourable Bill English, uh, paid a, a visit to the Pacific, building on a lot of dialogue that has happened over many years, as other speakers have indicated, uh, as to the usefulness of changing the settings and changing the rules. So nationals support this bill uh, very much. Uh, I acknowledge the Honourable Henry Puna uh, and others in the gallery who might I've spoken to about this uh, situation many times. Uh, in the last term of government, uh, when I was uh, the minister responsible for World War 100 commemorations, I uh, learned the stories that uh, Alfred Naru, my colleague, alluded to just before about the courage and the bravery of the Pacific Islanders who fought and gave their lives uh, for the Commonwealth. And uh, I don't think they were treated particularly fairly at those times, uh, but uh, nonetheless, they showed great willingness uh, to serve uh, as part of New Zealand and the, the wider Commonwealth uh, battles that were going on. I think that uh, when we tried to change the settings uh, in 2015, and I was the Minister for Seniors at that time, it didn't work as well as we had hoped it would. Uh, I think we expected it to cost about five million. It cost about one million, which showed the uptake was not particularly effective. Uh, but really what was required, and, and the message has been coming through loud and clear, uh, was that we needed to make it as easy as possible, and that um, uh, uh, five plus 50 rule needed to go. And, uh, um, there was uh, a letter in April of 2017 of last year. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs stated that, uh, based on advice he had received from his officials and the reports that he had had during his own visits to the Cook Islands, Nui and Tokelau, the current settings were just not working as well as they had intended to be. So clearly more was done, and I commend the government and the minister uh, for carrying through this legislation. It has been an important thing to do and I acknowledge that. I also acknowledge that um, we needed to do this and we also needed to be fair. So uh, as others have indicated, there are uh, special categories. One of them is special portability. So if uh, an individual moves to one of the 22 nominated Pacific nations, they can have a proportion of their New Zealand superannuation with them. But there is a very special relationship with the Cook Islands, Nui and Tokelau, because those people are New Zealand citizens. And this bill, I think, reflects a wider con uh, constitutional responsibility uh, that New Zealand has for its citizens living in the Pacific. And for them to be able to take their skills, take their, uh, their, the wisdom that they have learned in their time away from their homelands back to those communities uh, to fuel that economic powerhouse, but also, as the previous speaker indicated, uh, the cultural exchange. Uh, we are richer as nations from having shared your people and, and becoming uh, more aware of the issues through the Pacific, through having people living here uh, from the, the three islands. And uh, we need to acknowledge that they need to return home at some point. And I think it needs to happen at a time when people are able to make a financial contribution uh, through their New Zealand superannuation. So on many levels, I think that this is a, an excellent thing to support. Um, I don't intend to take too much more time on this uh, beyond acknowledging the people in this House over many years who have listened to the people of the Pacific and who have heard what has been said and come up with a solution that this entire House supports uh, so that it can be uh, to the betterment of the three Pacific Island nations. So without hesitation and with pride, I commend this bill to the House. I call the Honourable Ron Mark. Madam Speaker, this is a proud day for New Zealand First. Uh, and